What's that smell? Oh, it's packets. By the time we're done here, we will recognize the importance of Wireshark and examine an initial data capture. It's called packet sniffing, and it's not part of any official certification, at least that I can see. And that's one of the challenges with certification. Don't, don't get me wrong, I love certification. I love how it propels people into careers in technology. But one of the challenges is vendors who create the certifications aren't really motivated to show anything beyond the equipment that they create. So things like Wireshark, which is an amazing open source utility that you can use to troubleshoot network environments, goes pretty much unmentioned. That's my goal here, is to bring you into the world of Wireshark and show you what this tool can do for you, and that's it. Just to get you started, to, to, to know that this exists, show you the basics of how to use it, because I know once you dive into it, you're going to love it, and you're just going to keep going with it on your own. The irony is, I've been in the world of network technology for more than 20 years, and Wireshark was a recent development. That's my Jeremy's Wireshark story right up the top there. I actually bought a book by Laura Chappell, and if you want to know the name in Wireshark, it's her. She, she is the one that essentially latched onto it and started creating training after training. She didn't create the product, she just started training people on how to use it. And I bought this giant five, 700 page book and I flipped to page one and she said, most people see Wireshark as the last possible troubleshooting step. And by the time I'm done with this book, I want you to think of it as the first because you should. And I looked at that and I go, no way, no way. Wireshark is what you pull out when all else fails until you learn it, until you realize just how handy this utility can be and then it does. It still hasn't moved to my first, but it moves within the first two or three different tools that I use to try and figure out what's going on with the network. And I wish that I wish someone would have jumped me into Wireshark like I'm about to do for you way earlier in my career. So the core reasons you want to learn Wireshark is it deepens your learning. It deepens your learning not of Wireshark, but of network environments and applications. Wireshark shows the actual packets going across the network. You literally see packet by packet coming through. You can grab any one of them and break them open to see what's going on. When things don't make sense, that's where this comes in. And it gives you a deep understanding of the protocols. I mean, deeper than even the books go because you're seeing how the protocol interacts in real time. It increases your network security because there's so much that happens that goes undetected. Things come and try and probe your network all the time to see what sort of ports are open. And without a tool like Wireshark, most of the time it just becomes, oh yeah, a thing that's happening under the radar. Network reconnaissance is easy to spot with Wireshark. Wireshark demystifies dumb problems. What do I mean? I mean, you're going to run into it at some point in your network journey. One of those problems that you're just like, what's going on? And it turns out to be a bug in the software or someone's application is doing something that they didn't expect. Those are dumb problems because they take days of your time and you're like, oh, what's going on? And you finally figure it out and you're like, that is so dumb. I did not learn anything. There's no gratification. There's a bug in your software, <laughs> you know, and it's like, you just wasted my life. Wireshark can condense the amount of time that you spend on those issues. And I'm not even going to go into it right now, but hundreds of other reasons you will use this tool. So my goal right now is just to show you where to get it and how to capture some data. So check it out. I'm going to go into Firefox with some cute beavers there and type in Wireshark. Hit enter. Bam, download. That's it. Download the installer, walk through the install. It's it's a piece of cake. Right now, the current version is 3.0.5, and by the time you hear this, it, it, it develops quickly. I'm sure it's going to be on a newer version. It will install a lot of drivers behind the scenes that will actually capture data using your, your network card. Goes through the install, piece of cake, then you open the application. And this is exactly what that application looks like. Now you notice, as I've opened it, it's almost like this little heartbeat monitor is going across the screen. This represents all the network cards that are on my device right now. The one that's being used is the LAN adapter. That gives you a representation of just a pulse of traffic that's going through that adapter. If I wanna start capturing it, all I need to do is double click the adapter and whoop, I start capturing packets. Every single one of these represents a packet going across the network. So let's stop for a second. Let's just see a quick scan of what we can see going on. And this, by the way, I'm at home right now. It's 10, 16 at night. 
because this is what I do. I drink coffee and I can't go to sleep and I want to talk about Wireshark. So, so here's what's going on in my house at 10 at night. I've got a couple packs going across. Now, first off, when I, when I see this, I go, okay, well, who am I? Let me just open a command prompt right here, bring that into your view and do an IP config. I am 192.168.1.23. So that's me. So all of this stuff that I see, 23, 23, 23, that represents my computer uh, sending because I'm the source right now. Now, uh, right there, but ooh, by the way, this is the time. So there it is, 10, 15, and 57 seconds as, as the time goes on. Uh, a lot of times the default time will come in the, the second since the beginning of capture. I, that's that's the default on a lot of Wireshark versions. Um, I don't like that because it doesn't, you know, it's kind of like, okay, you started the capture here, then 0.3 seconds into it, I saw this. Then 0.5 seconds into it, I saw that. I mean, that's cool if you're, if you're looking for a very specific thing that happened at a certain time since the capture started. But I'm kind of more of like a, well, not, not date. Um, I'm kind of more of a, um, show me the actual time because uh, that's what's going on. Hey, I got to stop talking. There we go. Back to the time of day. So let's, let's look at packet number one that was captured when I first clicked the button to bring this in. It came from the source of Luxel 487D34. Huh? What's up with that? This represents the source MAC addresses. And I don't know if you've seen a MAC address before, probably by this point, it looks something like this. It's gonna be 12 characters, hexadecimal. So you have zero through nine as valid characters and A through F as valid characters that can comprise those 12. Now, what you may or may not know is that the first six of those represents the vendor that that chunk was assigned to. That's right. If you want to become a network vendor, you want to build network cards, Sam's network cards, buy them now. You go to the, the, the powers that be and say, I need a Mac address assignment. They say, give us money. You do. They give you a chunk of Mac addresses and they assign the first six characters to you and publish it in a big old database. Wireshark has access to that database and it recognizes the vendor that bought those is actually Luxel a manufacturer of network equipment. This is the unique ID that Luxel decided to assign to that. Now, freeze for just a second. Is this Wireshark that you're talking about or MAC addresses? Both. And that's why Wireshark is kind of a, I call it kind of like a pinnacle of learning. Because to really work well in Wireshark, you have to know the tool and how it works, but you really have to know networks and how they function. To really get that Luxel is the name of a router, you have to understand that MAC addresses represent vendors in the first six characters, right? So it kind of brings all these things together and remember what I said, deepens your understanding. So my little Luxel device that's going on at this house right now is sending a broadcast for an ARP. And it's going, well, here's, here's actually in kind of plain English what's going on. The, the Luxel device, which by the way, I'll, I'll tell you, it's my router. I have a router here that's manufactured by a vendor called Luxel. You might be going, Jeremy, why don't you have a Cisco router? I do. I literally just bought this house a couple weeks ago and just moved in and they left their router and I just haven't had a chance to swap it out. That's, that's why you see the room changing behind me so often is I'm still like, why is the couch there? This is my office. It's just too heavy for me to carry out. So, so that's, that's what's going on here. So, so let's figure out the network that I just bought, right? So, so the Luxel router is saying, who has 192.168.1.158? Tell me 192.168.1.2. This is the ARP process. It stands for the Address Resolution Protocol. It's trying to translate this IP address into a MAC address. It is 192.168.1.2, meaning the Luxel device, that's who's generating this, and it's trying to figure out who is 192.168.1.158. That's just packet number one. Take a look at this. If I scroll down a little, oh, just in the few seconds that we had this thing going on, we captured 94 packets. And that's at my house at 10.15 at night. My kids, my wife, they're all asleep, so... That's a lot of data to capture for not much going on. What does that tell you? It tells you that if you're going to work effectively in Wireshark, you better get really good at using this thing right here. It's a filter that allows you to filter down and look for exactly what you want to see. But that, my friend, is in another video. For now, we have recognized the importance of Wireshark and examined an initial data capture. 
Man, if this was a reality TV show, that was it. You gotta watch the next episode. Keep going. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.